So in today's video, I'm going to discuss about the concept of thesis, antithesis and synthesis and how this is used in most of the research formulations and the way research is conducted around in most departments and universities around the world. So let's start with the concept of thesis. So if you look at the definition of thesis from a dictionary, the typical definition of a thesis is that it's a statement or theory that is put forward as a premise to be maintained or proved. So what this is telling you is that the thesis is a statement. So when you are performing a research proposal presentation or you are putting forth a research proposal to a committee, you essentially put forth this statement or theory and then your objective is to prove this statement through your research. So one more definition of the thesis, which is the one which we are more familiar with, is that it's a long dissertation which involves personal research written by a candidate. So of course, this second definition is what you end up writing to prove your thesis. And the same word is used both for the thesis you have put forward as well as for the document which you have written towards your college degree. Now, once you have put forth a thesis, now there are going to be some repercussions of your putting forth this thesis. So there are people who are going to question your thesis and there are people who are going to criticize your thesis. And these people need to come up with facts and knowledge about what are the gaps in your thesis and they should try to expose the fallacies in your thesis. So again, this critical perspective of the thesis is sometimes known as the antithesis. Though this word is generally not used in regular conversation and we talk about it as a criticism of the thesis or the criticism of the research proposal. And then the aim of this whole process is that finally through your presentation of the thesis and through the criticism of the work which you have done in your thesis, you come to a synthesis. So what synthesis does is, it that, is that it resolves the conflict between thesis and uh, antithesis by creating common truths and forcing a new proposition. So I'll give you a very simple example to illustrate this concept and this will make it clear about how the processes in many departments and universities take place in terms of a student developing a research proposal and then it being critiqued and so on. So let us say you are a student at a university and you have done a lot of uh, fact finding around yourself and you are looking for a practical problem which can have an impact on the society which surrounds you. So let us say you are in a country where people eat a lot of rice or in a region of a country where people eat rice and you have found that eating too much rice is leading to weight gain in people and that in terms is causing diabetes, blood pressure and many other health problems. So you basically come up with a thesis proposal that weight gain is caused when you eat rice. So that is your thesis proposal that eating rice leads to weight gain. So now you go about defending this particular proposal. So maybe you pick up some information, you do some statistical samples in the region where you are based. You compare the different people who eat different types of food and you come up with certain statistical data which shows that the people who eat rice tend to have more weight and therefore your thesis proposition is correct. Now you take this particular proposal, you write it out in a few pages and you make a presentation and then you go and present it before a committee of faculty who now want to scrutinize your thesis proposal or your thesis. So let's say the first member of this committee asks you a question, how come Japanese don't gain weight, but they also eat rice? So at this point, you are suddenly stuck by a difficult question. 
and your brain delves into this topic and you come up with a solution like maybe it's due to genetics. So maybe there is a genetic difference between the population group you are studying and the population groups in Japan. So fine, that may be one reason for the problem. So you have a disclaimer to make in your research proposal. Now a second person comes up in this committee and asks you, how come people in the United States gain weight and have a lot of problems, but they don't eat rice? So again, now you are stumped with a difficult question. And so your solution to this problem after thinking a lot is that maybe they are eating too much in terms of portion size. So that could be a problem for weight gain in that country. So fine, this person is probably satisfied with your answer. But then a third committee member asks you a question. Well, if that was true, how come people in France don't gain weight when they eat bread also? And then of course you say that, oh, I know that the solution to this problem because their portion sizes are probably less than in the US and so that may be the reason why the weight gain is lesser in France though they eat uh, French bakery foods, baguettes and so on. Now the department chairman comes to your help and he says yes that could be true and also remember that in European countries they eat more natural products, less of processed food and so on. So maybe you go back and forth on this discussion and at the end of this discussion, you have come to a certain revelation and you have realized that your thesis premise needs some change. So while you started with the premise that to eat rice is bad and that leads to weight gain, what your discussions have led you to believe is that eating too much processed carbs is what is causing weight gain and it is not only rice. So again, now your synthesis comes out to be that when you eat too much processed carbs, that leads to weight gain. So again, through this particular process of putting out a thesis proposal, getting it critiqued by a certain body or committee, and then absorbing these critiques into the proposal led you to coming out with this particular synthesis, which then becomes your actual revised thesis proposal with which you can proceed. And through this process, you have also filled in the lacunas which were there in your research proposal and you have come across a better research proposal. So again, this is an explanation of why sometimes the criticism in research discussions is quite strong and some new students feel quite peeved by the level of harshness which may be present in some of these research discussions. But the point that the committee people are trying to do is to poke holes in the thesis which you have created and in doing so they want to ensure that you fill in these gaps in your thesis and so you come up with a synthesis which actually addresses a problem which is more of a real problem and which can contribute to the field. So it is very important to have this process because you need to ensure that the problem which you are working on actually has a relevant and useful solution. So again, therefore, this process of proposing a thesis, going through a criticism and then coming up with a synthesis and then replacing your thesis with this particular synthesis is one of the best ways to polish a proposal. And this is the same technique which is also used when you write a paper or when you write a research proposal to a body which gives funding for grants, is that you put out your thesis in the form of the research proposal or the paper, it is critiqued by somebody, and then you look at these comments, you perform a synthesis of your work with these comments, and then this particular document or final proposition which you make is the one with which you go forward. So this was my take on some of these concepts about thesis and synthesis as it takes place in research today. So again, I hope you benefited from this video and stay tuned to my channel for further videos on research, science and technology.
Thank you very much.